Oh, uh, hey, how are you? This is Radio Free Flint. You're listening to Arthur Bush, and we have a great uh, guest for us today. Interesting as heck. And her name is Sandra Branch. She is with the Flint Public Art Project, as well as uh, Gallery on the Go, or Galleries on the Go. Uh, welcome, Sarah, and thank you for taking the time to explain uh, such a wonderful and interesting project that you've undertaken. Thank you, Sandra. And, Sandra, um, I'm sorry. That's okay, Art. We <laughs> called me Sandra up until now. <laughs> But well, that's, that's okay. They call me Miss Sandra around town. Yeah, I, I shouldn't have any trouble with your name. <clears throat> um, so in any event, uh, you are involved in the Flint Public Art Project. Tell us all about that. What What is it? Well, the Flint Public Art Project is a nonprofit that was started in Flint by Stephen Zacks. We took over in 2016. Uh, Joe Schiapani uh, was our director, and I was uh, on the board of directors. Then we uh, changed it to a pretty much a, a public art and mural project to beautify Flint. And we brought 100 murals last year with artists that were local as well as artists, international artists. This year, since the COVID is here, we're having a problem trying to negotiate around these, these circumstances but we have murals going on it'll be much less this year and if you see any of our muralists out there painting just blow the horn take a picture but due to the COVID, we don't want you interacting with them but you'll also see our little murals on the ground um we also did something for the pride project and we put little rainbow hearts all around on the um on businesses that wanted to support the LBGT movement. So we did that also. But you will still see our murals and Gallery on the Go is still doing murals with the uh, aerosol artists that were graffitiing up the town. We're trying to change them into muralists and have them beautify the city. They also do the boarding project with the city of Flint where we paint the boards that decorate some of the houses in the more depressed areas where we have seven out of 10 of the homes are boarded up. So wow. that gives, gives people a uh, neighborhood a, a just a position of um, beauty to blight. So. Well, that's interesting as heck. Uh, uh, so your project, um, it, it run through the uh, the Flint Art Project. That how is that funded? Where do they get their money? Well, we take private donations as well as we apply for several different grants throughout uh, the area. We are now beginning to apply for international grants so we can get more money to pay the artists because they've done some beautiful work, but mostly they've done it for free out of out of the kindness of their hearts. We pay for their um, travel here and we house them ourselves. And then they paint these beautiful murals on and this pretty much donated time because we don't have the money to fund all so, the paintings. So if somebody, somebody in this uh, stratosphere here that's listening to this podcast or who happens to stumble onto my many Facebook uh, postings, where would I tell direct them to give you money? Actually, we have um, donations set up through our Facebook and Instagram pages. You can go to Flint Public Art Project and at FlintArtProject.com. So you can you can reach us through Instagram at, at Flint Public Art Project, or you can go to our website and just look us up on Facebook. All right. So, you know, I've had a long interest in graffiti, uh, as you could probably imagine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and one of my previous assignments, actually, for a long time, actually, I didn't like graffiti very much. I still don't, particularly. But, you know, years ago, we had a guy named uh, Robert Katrinik. 
And Robert Katrinik sometimes was known as the Leather Man. Actually, he was known <laughs> as the Leather Man on the south end of Flint. And he got the notion that he was sick of graffiti too. And so he started painting over all these uh, tags, which is street language for graffiti. Yeah, that's and their street. He started language. painting up the town. I mean, it was an amazing thing what he did to South Saginaw Street. Well, yeah, we um, kind of stepped in that slot in 2014, and we began to do that. I was sitting at a train track, and I saw the beautiful tags that they had time to do. And I said, well, that's not like what I see in our city. You know, I see a bunch of scribbling. And then I saw some of the same names. I said, well, that must mean they have time to do that. And I didn't really get mad about the train weight. And so I said, well, if we could do this to some of the houses on the north side, because I was working at Christ and Richmond Center off of Hamilton at the time. And in that neighborhood, everything was lighted, left open. They weren't even boarding the houses up and the kids were going in there and playing and it was getting hurt. And it was just ridiculous. So I said, what can I do being an artist? And I said, I can get these artists that are tagging up the town and try to give them some tips and skills and connections so where they could get paid for doing murals. And now that's what they're doing. Most of them are coming to me, getting assignments and going out in the city and doing work for people and actually getting paid. So, so it has formed quite a few of the uh, older ones. Now we've got a new crew that I've got to go under bridges and fetch <laughs> or wait till the courts spit them out to me and get them for some uh, community service work. That's another thing. If you all want something painted and I have some community service artists, we can probably work out a deal. So you would also want to contact uh, Gallery on the Go Division through Flint Public Art Project to do something like that. And if your son or daughter got in trouble tagging, you might want to hook them up with me so we can transform them into muralists. <laughs> so you, I'd be all for this idea. I, I, I'm fascinated by it. Uh, you know, I have a friend in Seattle, Laurie Spivak, who is in is is uh, <clears throat> she's um, in the in the anti graffiti business. Basically, she does contracts with uh, governments and companies that pay her to get rid of the graffiti. So they go out and and tackle the project and. They, they're not doing murals, they're just getting rid of it. So uh, when See, I heard that, about this, I was fascinated. That's interesting because when you get rid of it, they see that as a blank canvas to come back and do more damage. Well, there's a battle, no question about it. There is a battle. Uh, the one thing I always I wanted to do, but never had time for, I guess, maybe my next life I'll have time for it. I have time now, actually is these graffiti, I should talk to the judges about this because the graffiti artists essentially telegraph what's going on in the community. And where right. I really started getting interested in it was I had a friend who, I won't call her a snitch because that's not really what she was, but she had an interest in graffiti and started documenting it throughout the city. And then started to understand what all that scribbling, as you called it, meant. And it does mean something. And it, it sends messages. And at one point in my career, a long time ago, we used that in gang prosecutions where there were murders or, you know, serious violent crimes. And we and occasionally we introduced it as evidence. So these things that you think are scribbles and don't make any sense, they're actually... Uh, a, yeah, they're a, a actually signs. They're, they're actually signs to their their people, and it's a a voice for the disenfranchised. It's definitely yeah. a language, and they definitely speak out in times of turmoil. So they're kind of like unsung artists. Yeah, a voice of the disadvantaged. Yeah, kind, but they cause a lot of damage, and I educate of, them. I educate a, them on the the possibility that they're preventing jobs from coming here because they're 
making places uninhabitable for businesses and it runs their insurance up high and that's, that's right. why there are no jobs so the right. symptom and becomes the problem yeah and then they also they also telegraph to people in law enforcement, uh, although I don't know that they've even got anybody around today that understands this stuff. Uh, it telegraphs to the people they probably don't want to have telegraphed to what exactly they're up to. So, uh, but what a wonderful idea that you're doing. And great, a great idea to turn a negative to a positive. And I've heard people talk about this, and they were saying that they took a tour or something. Was it downtown? Yes. We have a, um, a virtual tour that you can take. There's a map on our Facebook website. So you can go and interact with the murals and go and see them in this time of social distancing and take a picture by them and send it to our page. Also, we uh, run contests like that where you can win art. Some of the artists that come here leave prints and and we sell them for fundraisers and uh you could win t-shirts and prints and stuff like that do you sell those through the flint council uh, arts council we sell them usually at totem books in our events but you can always pick up something that we've done some of our artwork at totem books over there on um i believe is 610 grand travers across from the white horse tavern um, the oh, yeah. owner yeah. Uh, is a partner with us and he supports everything that we do. And we really appreciate Dean and, and his efforts to change the environment downtown because we wanted to change the narrative of Flint with our murals. And now we have, we're adding pixel sticks where you can go up and take the, uh, the barcode or the URC code off of the, uh, mural and it'll link you to the artist and the that did the mural and give you a kind of like an art gallery experience outside because it'll tell you about the artist it'll tell you about the mural the interpretation of the art and it'll also link you to the website of the artist so you can purchase art from the artist directly so we're well, trying to try yeah. to make it a happening <laughs> For sure. Well, you know, a lot of cities uh, around the country do this. I know down in uh, Florida, where I live a good part of the year, in St. Pete, they have uh, murals and yes, they're listen. always trying to get people to take tours. We're the linking cities. with the Shine uh, Festival in St. Pete. So you will be seeing us down there in your other home because I too am a snowbird <laughs> um, well, from Lake Wales. And we're going to be... Oh, yeah visiting down there and bringing some of the artists from down there up here and we're going to be participating down there but this year in October we're going down for the Shine Festival to see if we can get a partnership going a sister city oh yeah what a wonderful thing well if you need any help I'll, I'll uh, run some interference there myself uh oh, now how, how do you pick a building to do it you know I, I keep thinking oh, of this we, poor poor kid in Detroit who is, who is really quite accomplished as an artist nationally, internationally. He paints a building and they, they arrest him. Well, see, we get permission. <laughs> see, I used to be a law enforcement art and I was a sheriff in New Orleans. So that's right. why I intervene with the um, uh, program and the, and the courts and do community service work. And I also, I understand that we need permission. So we actually put out um, applications for people to get walls or give, donate a wall, and then we put that on our list. We always have permission. So, and we have so many people, we, we run out of artists to do the walls because so many people want their buildings painted for free, you know? But tell so. us a few of the a few of the buildings that people might you know familiar landmarks that people might. Uh, well, if you go up, up Brush Alley downtown, you can see several murals up Brush Alley, and go all start down at um, First Street and go all the way up to the end of Brush Alley, and you'll see one, two, three, four. You got about six murals over there. Then on Garland Street. 
we have um, about four or five. So, and then when you go down to university, you'll have about six. And Grand Traverse from downtown up through where the School of um, the International Academy is, we have several going that way and then up the street to the International Academy. And then that takes you down where um, Winslow had done, Art Winslow had done the murals. So that puts you down to Saginaw Street and that carries the murals out. We did a few on Saginaw Street. We did one at Moffat Foods. Um, uh, Factory 2 has a mural. Hurley Hospital over by the Eastern Michigan Food Bank, there's murals and Oh, there's so many. There's a hundred of them. <laughs> so actually there's about 175 that we did in the last two years. Are there, uh, what do they use as a medium? We use exterior house paints. And so, do you, you get donations for, for, for this or? No, we take the money from the grant and we spend it on paint. That's the majority of the money goes towards paint. We, just recently acquired a sponsor with the aerosol paint. We also go over it with aerosol paint for the details. And we, we're with Cobra, with a K, Cobra Paints. We will be a distributor. And that's a specific special aerosol for graffiti artists or aerosol artists. They sell, they sell paint for graffiti? Yes, that's, it's a specialty because at, at a low pressure, you can make fine lines. And then with the high pressure, you can, you can make large, big lines. It, it depends on the airflow from the can going out the caps. The caps are used like brushes for the brush strokes. So they, they have quite an interesting array of tools to uh, make those murals. It's, yeah. it's not as easy as just taking a can of of rust-oleum and going out there and going wild. Yeah, I've seen some of that artwork. It's not so good. I remember one time they <laughs> they painted up uh, Flushing Park with a bunch of uh, offensive, racially uh, offensive uh, uh, tags all over the park. And eventually it turned out to be a bunch of, uh, it was hate stuff. That's what it was. Yeah, it was. And, um, and it was intimidating to, uh, to a family that was out there. They had a family reunion out there and they were painting up the pavilions and uh, eventually uh, Judge Nether could have that case and they put them in jail. Yeah, and well, sometimes that's, that is the outcome. It depends on if they're able to trans be transformed or, or be reformed. If they are not, then that's their fate. And mm -hmm. I kind of tell them, this is, this is what happens when you criminally damage someone's property. So when they get with me, I kind of give them an education as well as teach them a skill set that they can use to make money with, so. You're doing mentoring as well with this project. Right, I've been mentoring, I'm, I'm kind of known as the mom of graffiti artists. They know me and I don't know a lot of them, but they find me. And when I do find them, then I tell them, look, it's not fun and games. If you're gonna work with me, you can't spray paint up the town. And I learn their tags and I tell them I'll stand up for them in court if it's something that they had done, but if it's something that they're doing currently, no, I'm not gonna stand up for them. Wow. And well, you're my hero. <laughs> you're my hero. Where were you in the where were you in the last decade? Uh, yeah, well, could have used to. <laughs> oh my gosh! And uh, so these artists are. I mean, the, I, I, aerosol. What did you call aerosol them? artists? Yeah, aerosol artists. That's like different that. than graffiti. That's what I we're like trying that to... It gives an aura of respect to, to this to this activity. Now. No, I don't know what the hell I was going to say. The, the, uh, when these guys are going out, now one of the things I learned from being the prosecuting attorney in Flint, Michigan for so many years is that you can, you can cover it up, but Leatherman got respect from those on the street. They didn't come and mess up his stuff. They, uh, 
they decided to leave his stuff alone for the most part. But each other rivals, they tag on top of each other and God knows how much paint they've used. That's so, a fight. So, yeah, it is. It's a war. But That's right. With your people that are going out and doing this uh, work, and some of it's absolutely gorgeous and, and uh, creative and magnificent. What, Thank you. Do they come out and wreck it? I mean, do they come out and tag on oh, top? Oh, no. Not often do they come out and go over the other artists' work. Because we introduce them to the artists, and there becomes a mutual respect. And they learn and get techniques from these artists. So it, it's a matter of actually communication and respect. And, and Uh-oh. We lost her. Oh, no. We have lost our, our guest. So in that case, we've lost a connection. That's modern technology. We'll have to take a break here and we'll be right back. Sorry about that. 